Night Church family, Pastor Kyle Morris here, and I'm excited for this upcoming Sunday night because it'll be our second prayer meeting of the year. Really over the last year, year and a half, I've just continued to be in prayer and study and gathering information about what would it look like for us to have a consistent prayer meeting at Ottawa Bible Church. And I know you're thinking prayer meetings aren't new ideas, Pastor Kyle, and they're not. The reality is prayer meetings have been going on for a really long time in the church. And uh, one of those inspirations for a prayer meeting has been a lot of my reading uh, about Charles Spurgeon. And uh, Spurgeon implemented a prayer meeting in his uh, pastorate where they met weekly for prayer meetings. I mean, we if you know anything about Spurgeon, he was preaching all the time. Uh, every day almost, he was giving sermons, and he was out preaching the gospel. And so he had a prayer meeting that was consistent at his church, and uh, it was an opportunity for the church to come together and to bring prayer requests, to pray for the church body, uh, to pray for the community, and to come before God and seek his will. So I want to read something from a, a book called Only a Prayer Meeting, and it's a collection of Spurgeon's notes and sermons uh, on prayer and for his prayer meetings. So it gives us a little bit of an insight into history, into what Spurgeon did as a pastor, and it helps us today really look at scripture and, uh, and encourage us to partake in prayer meetings just as the saints did in a Victoria era England and uh, in London itself and, and be able to continue this tradition, not a tradition for the sake of tradition, but because scripture calls us to be a people of prayer. See, God has given us promises, and Spurgeon is going to speak of these promises as we look to prayer and the expectation that we should have when we pray. So I'm going to read this for you. Spurgeon, uh, this is one of his notes from one of his meetings, uh, and uh, hopefully it will encourage you as you look to engage in prayer with our church. It says this, I believe in the business of prayers. I mean, prayers in which you take to God one of the many precious promises which he has given us in his word and expect it to be fulfilled as certainly as we look for the money to be given unto us when we go to the bank to cash a check or a note. We should think of going there, toiling over the counter, chatting with the clerk upon every conceivable subject except the one thing for which we had gone to the bank, then coming away without the coin we needed, but we should lay before the clerk the promise to pay the bearer a certain sum, tell him in what form we wish to take the amount, count the cash after him, and then go our own way to attend to other business. That is just an illustration of the method in which we should draw supplies from the bank of heaven. We should seek out the promise which applies to that particular case, plead it before the Lord in faith, expect to have the blessing to which it relates, and then having received it, let us proceed to the next duty devolving upon us. There are many requests which have been sent to us for presentation this evening, Spurgeon says. Among them is one from a venerable clergyman who has often entreated us to remember him in prayer and who still suffers from such deep depression of spirit that he's unable to satisfactorily to discharge the duties of his sacred office. Then there are letters from friends who are in various stages of spiritual sickness and who desire us to bring their case before the Lord in believing and sympathetic supplication. We will pray that the mental affliction of this dear servant of Christ may be removed in God's own time and that the soul melodies of these other tried ones may also be cured by the great physician. Verily, there is a God that heareth prayer. Do any of you doubt it? If so, you will not receive answers to your petitions. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. See, we see that in Hebrews chapter 11, 6, which I want to read you not in the King James Version, but I'll read you in the NASB. It says this, And without faith it is impossible to please him, for the one who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he proves to be one who rewards those who seek him. See, as we come to prayer before God as the church, we need to believe that he's listening, 
We need to believe that he's going to answer his prayers. We need to believe the promises in which he has already given in his word. See, when we come to God in prayer and we ask for the things in which are his will and his promises and are his desires, we can expect it to happen because he's already promised it. God answers his promises. We can trust God in those answers because of who he is. I want to encourage you, church, to come on Sunday night because I expect God to move. And I expect that you would do the same thing, that you would come together as the church looking for God to do the things that he has already promised us. See, when we ask God for things like wisdom, when we ask God for things like understanding, when we ask God to give us strength and to walk in the ways that are pleasing to him, those are the things in which God will answer. So come Sunday night, March 3rd, 5 p.m. here at Ottawa Bible Church, and we're going to pray together and come with expectation in your hearts, expectation that God will answer the prayers that we send up because God tells us that he will bless those ones who come to him with expectation of God working and answering prayers. Thank you, church body. Can't wait to see you Sunday morning for church, but also for the prayer meeting. Have a blessed week.